Hey guys, this is Joe, founder and host of StartupRate.io. As you guys may already know, I've run this podcast full time since January 2021. I'm very happy to announce that Anchor FM is my sponsor for this podcast. If you haven't heard about Anchor, it's the easiest way to make a podcast. Let me explain. It's free and it's easy to use, even for a newbie. There are creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. Anchor will distribute your podcast for you so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts and many more. You can make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. Welcome to StartupRad.io, your podcast and YouTube blog covering the German startup scene with news, interviews, and live events. Hello and welcome, everybody. This is Joe from StartupRate.io, your startup podcast and YouTube blog from Germany. Today, as you may be able to see, if you're watching this on YouTube, I'm wearing a, I'm wearing a polo shirt. It's winter and it's getting really warm here. Despite that, I do have, for the first time ever, a member of the German parliament here in my interview. Hey, Thomas, how are you doing? Hi, Aaron. Hi. I'm doing fine. It's uh, quite quite hot here as well in Berlin. But business still needs to go on. We may add that you are a member of the Bundestag, which is um, the which is the parliament in Germany, for example, that elects the chancellor. Um, but you are here for one reason, because we want to talk about the 10 billion startup program. The German federal government, Bundesregierung, is kicking off. Um, therefore, I reached out to uh, the Federal Ministry of Economics and they connected me to you. So uh, after some preparation, we finally got this interview together. Thank you very much for everybody who helped to prepare it. And um, of course, I looked at your CV on LinkedIn and it turns out you are an entrepreneur. Can you tell us a little bit about what you did before you got elected? first to the state state what would be the right term state representative state parliament in nordrhein westfalen and then the federal parliament yes i used to be an entrepreneur but it's quite a long time ago it's been in the mid of the 90s and i did it for 10 years and i started as kind of a system administrator uh, uh, it was because a friend of mine, he worked uh, uh, for an executive search company, he told me, so we need some guy to implement Windows 95 on all our computers. And I always wanted to be an entrepreneur and I thought, okay, I do this and this is just uh, something for, for, for part time. Yeah? But in the end, I became a lot of recommendations and afterwards I had a lot of these executive search companies who wanted me to, to make services not only for their client, for their service and everything and then a small company uh, uh, existed out of that and uh, so we were specialized on SME companies in our region so it was just boost, bootstrap founded and not with VC and everything and uh, it, it's not been a scalable business model um, but in the end so these are my, my roots from the business uh, side. Mm -hmm. I was I was a little bit curious because you are apparently an entrepreneur. You've run a successful company and then you got elected to the state parliament in Nordrhein-Westfalen. Uh, why did you do that? You already had some useful skills. No need for politics, right? Yeah, I think there there is, if you look at the people sitting there in the parliament, there is no lack of lawyers, uh, to be honest. And uh, I, 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 I must not say anything bad about lawyers because my wife is one. Uh, but um, I, actually, I believe it's, it's important also to have different perspectives than the ones uh, from the people making law business. And so um, I, I always love to build up things. 
And uh, this was possible with my own company. And I realized it's also possible uh, being a member of the parliament. And right now, I'm a commissioner for the dig digital economy and startups here in the Ministry for Economic Affairs. It's the first time that such kind of position exists. And um, so it's my, my huge pleasure to build up these, these VC activities um, uh, that we are doing here. And I believe uh, we realized the multiple this period. And so I'm quite confident with, with what I'm doing. Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. So um, basically our interview got triggered on uh, end of March 2021 for the simple reason there was a press announcement about a 10 billion startup program from the German federal government. And um, that was that was a point I reached out and um, I finally got you now on the interview. And basically what would of interest for me was to learn a few things. For example, for example, where does the money come from? Apparently tax money, right? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> but but we are successful with investing tax uh, tax money because um, with the things that we have done in the past, uh, uh, we um, always achieved uh, a good performance uh, in the end. And so, therefore, I believe it's a good idea to, to invest tax, taxpayers' money. We do it with the KFW. And maybe if I may look back what, what we have done over the last years. So, uh, in, um, in a global scale, we are doing two things. The first thing is we are investing directly into startups, but therefore, we don't do this with our bureaucratic system. Uh, we created uh, a, a state-owned VC, also with private money. It's the High Tech Runner Fonds in, in Bonn. And also, we have Coparion for Series A investments. Uh, but the, the major part of the money is being invested in VCs as being a limited partner. Yeah? And therefore, we are partnering for years right now with the European Investment Fund, the EIF. Uh, and uh, with this construction, we invested around nearly 3 billion euros uh, in, in VCs. And I guess most of the German VCs are having uh, us or the uh, EIF as a limited partner. Mm -hmm. We may add a few things. First, of course, a little bit self-promotion. If you go down here in the show notes, there will be the interview linked with Alex von Frankenberg, the head of the Hightech Gründerfonds, a very interesting guy. And uh, he said during the interview that they're the most active seed investor in Europe. Secondly, we may add that KFW is um, a bank, but not the bank where you can open an account, but it's rather uh, originally set up to administrate the money from the European, European Recovery Program, Marshall Fund, and basically all political purposes uh, where there's a credit behind it. That's usually something that is run through KFW. And my understanding is that you also set up um, a VC unit there, as you said, acting as a limited partner. And there we may add limited partners are the type of guys who really have the money and then invest in the VCs because the VCs don't necessarily invest uh, their own money alone, right? That's absolutely correct. And uh, we um, have the KFW now for decades right now, but they never invested in VC. Uh, we started with this years ago with the European Investment Fund and uh, right now and over the last three years since I'm in this office, um, we started also a subsidiary of the KFW. It's the KFW Capital and they're specifically focused on VC investments and so they can partner with the European Investment Fund, but they can also do their own things. And uh, for us, they bring uh, some kind of intelligence in the whole system so that we, we have uh, an own construction uh, to act here in the VC scene. Mm -hmm. um, we also may add a little bit circumstance here because we have a general election coming up in September this year, uh, which means there will be elections here in Germany. There will be a new Bundestag constituting, I think it is called, sometime in fall. And it also means there will be a new Chancellor, uh, uh, Chancellor Merkel will retire and there will be a new boss in the house. Um, 
And that means there may be some changes because this is a political program and not everything is like 100% hammered out because the next government may want to do a few changes. But my understanding is that there's already some idea how this money will be split up and where it will be going, right? Yeah, so we are already starting with our investments here right now because we are working on this future fund initiative here, um, I mean, for minimum of two years right now. And so to implement all this is quite complex because we are being part of the European Union. Uh, uh, the state, uh, the state um, aid uh, law is very strict, and I think it's also right from the European Union uh, that they uh, block the states uh, from uh, bringing too much subsidies into uh, single companies. But this makes the whole organization quite complex. And yes, you are right. After 16 years, Angela Merkel is retiring. It's uh, it's the first time ever that the German Chancellor retires. Yeah? Uh, all the others have been kicked out by the voters out of the office, and uh, so uh, it's it's a different thing. And and. Um, yeah, uh, let's see how it, how it will go. But I'm coming from the CDU and um, right now Paul's looking quite good for us. And I believe we can continue. But on the other side, I believe if there would be a change in the government, it would take for them, I mean, a minimum of two or three years to start a different program. And I believe it's absolutely necessary for us to uh, foster more into the startup and the VC ecosystem because I uh, believe that um, uh, over the last years we achieved quite a good position, but we have to push further uh, to, to be ahead of the wave here uh, from the European perspective and also um, our approach is uh, to, to get real global leaders. And I believe you see first companies that could achieve that. For instance, Salonis, uh, first Decacorn in Germany, and they're really doing uh, high tech stuff. And when I was there at their site, I mean, it's two or two and a half years ago. So my first feeling was that so this will be the next SAP. And right now it seems to turn out exactly this. Yes, uh, very interesting startups around here. I have to admit that I even find the ones that are coming out straight off PhD thesis much more interesting. For example, we just had recently a nano structure startup here and what they are doing really dumped down to a level where I understand they are listening to molecules and therefore they can reproduce nanostructures. Very interesting stuff. And um, my understanding is right now that at least 1 billion euros, meaning something like 1.2 billion US dollars will go into deep tech funds, for example, that do stuff like this, like really deep tech, for example, even hardware, science, stuff like this, right? Yeah. So this, this is clearly our focus. Yes. We want, we want to get better, um, to commercialize our, um, our tech, uh, developments. And I believe if, if you look at Germany, we have a very strong R and D scene. We have the Fraunhofer Institute, for example, or the DLR, the German NASA. And uh, a lot of worldwide disruptive innovations uh, were uh, made there, for instance, the MP3 format or the CD-ROM. But on the other side, we weren't very good in commercialization of, of these technologies. And now uh, one of our approaches is the new Deep Tech Fund. We want to invest in startups that uh, have a deep tech uh, focus and uh, for a long period of time we are looking for partners all the programs we are doing uh, in general we are doing in a lot logic of uh, pari passu that means uh, um, we only spend 50 percent of the investment sum and the other 50 percent have to come from uh, from private investors and but and we are looking for partners to invest in companies for a pretty long time. Patient capital, ten to twenty years, even in companies that don't have a business model right now, but where we can see that they are really developing disruptive technologies. And uh, so this is a new approach for us with this uh, Deep Tech Future Fund, and it's going to start this summer. So right before the elections. 
And uh, on the other side, we are trying to commercialize more the projects that we have in these large R&D entities that we have. And for instance, we are going on the on the place uh, with a further billion euro in quantum computers. Uh, uh, and we're using our DLR um, uh, to, to give tenders to startups. So that's the, the core of the strategy. Uh, we have two teams. One team is constructing a quantum computer from scratch on at Fraunhofer and the other team at DLR. So they are trying to set up a startup ecosystem for quantum computing. And they, uh, as I said, have nearly 1 billion euros uh, to, to not invest in startups, but to help them with infrastructure, to help them with uh, technology and uh, to, to, to give tenders uh, to them. Uh, so uh, that an interesting ecosystem for startups is, is being constructed here. Mm -hmm. I see quantum computing, very interesting stuff. We may add that oh, even a German engineer uh, constructed one of the first viable modern day computers, Konrad Zuse, a uh, very cool guy. I would have loved to meet him. Um, okay. We understand quantum computing, deep tech, and you're going to be the LP of other, most likely uh, of other VC funds, most likely headquartered here in and around Germany. Is that approximately it? Where you're going to spend it? And so this is um, our main focus. Yeah. Um, uh, as I said, uh, um, we, we have uh, 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 two structures. One is to make these direct investments. We are extending this with this deep tech future fund, but also with the high tech winner for the HTGF, uh, we will give them uh, further money so they can start a, a fourth fund and also for Coparion. So we have these, these, uh, direct vehicles and, um, we also, uh, will build up, but I guess this will be more in the next year, uh, KFW separate managed accounts where we can uh, create side vehicles for, for specific investments. And um, on the other side, uh, the most of the money that we're going to spend is over the uh, European Investment Fund as a LP, uh, uh, something around 3 billion euros we have additionally for them. For the KFW, we have uh, two additional billion euros. And um, we're also going for venture debt. So this is uh, a further thing. Yeah. And the strategy is to invest in European VCs. And uh, they shall focus on the on the German startup ecosystem. But um, it's also possible uh, for for European VCs uh, who only make a smaller amount in Germany. But what what we want to achieve is that in the end, the money that we invest into these uh, VCs is uh, at least minimum also the money they invest in German startups. Mm -hmm. So that means if you have, for example, a 100 million VC fund and you put in 20 million, you expect the VC to invest approximately 20 million in Germany. Exactly. Exactly. Overall, we uh, would like to see that if we invest uh, 10, 10 million euros in the end, in an average, uh, there is a, a private spending of 20 million. Uh, so that's a multiple of two. Uh, but in the end, the minimum requirement and something always around is that we say so the amount that we invest in a VC shall be also the same amount they're investing in German startups. But German startups don't only have to be 100% located in Germany, I think. So this is, this would be completely unrealistic. As you can see, all our startups that are starting here from Germany, they are building international subsidiaries and R&D centers and whatever. And so the definition is quite wide what a German startup is. So there are a lot of opportunities. Uh, what I'm trying to say for, for VCs from all over Europe to, to come here and to invest and to be part of our network here. Oh, okay. So two questions. One, you are talking about the Deep Tech Future Fund and uh, where can people actually apply if a startup out there is listening to it? My understanding at the point of this recording, it's not yet set up, but it will be set up and maybe we'll have to add the link down here in the show notes, but where will it be located? Will it be administrated by KFW? No, it will be in the end. Uh, it's it's uh, um, a corporation for its own, and um, it is uh, fr from a juristical point uh, located in Bonn at the High Tech Wunderfonds. 
but they're completely independent in the end. So they can use some, some uh, common uh, uh, service tools with the uh, HTGF, but they're completely independent. And yes, we are, uh, we try to start here, uh, in summer. Yeah. And right now we are looking for a CEO. Uh, so we are pretty far in, in, uh, starting, uh, and starting the deep tech fund. And I believe over the next weeks, it will be more concrete to get an address and persons, uh, whom you can call or wait, where to send your pitch decks. Of course, we will have the link down here in the show notes if there is something coming up. And uh, you've been talking about um, what startups can expect. So the definition. So basically, there's an opportunity for European investors to get money as an LP. And as you said, there's a pretty wide definition of what a German startup is. I do believe... Um, also startups from abroad with substantial presence or, or some presence here in Germany uh, may be eligible for investments as well, meaning they have more than just a mailbox. <laughs> exactly. You can do my job. <laughs> 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 okay. Yeah, so there must be some serious business here. Yeah, that's true. Um, yeah, but we are quite open on that. And, and, uh, it's clear that, that Germany was always pushing for European Union and the European, uh, perspective. And we're doing this also when it comes to our VC and startup investments. And, and for instance, as we are, Uh, building up a very interesting, uh, to, to bring another technology, which I, I personally very much, uh, uh, like is, is the launcher technology rockets for the sky. And everybody's looking at Elon Musk and SpaceX and so on. We adopted some of his strategies and now we made a tender for startups here. And the first startup became uh, a tender of 11 million for two starts, uh, is aerospace, uh, from, Uh, from Munich and, um, uh, but on the other side, the high tech one of our pretty early invested in Orbital Express. It's a startup in UK. So we are not only focused on Germany. We are focused on, on European technology, but in the end, yeah, there has to be, uh, uh some business here because, uh, as it would be a bad deal for us. Mm -hmm. Um, we'll have some links down here in the show notes where people can apply. Um, and if you're listening to this or watching this somewhere, not on our website, there is a link to our blog post and we're doing this for the very simple reason. There are always limitations of how many, uh, how many letters we can put in, in the show notes. So the complete uh, show notes will only be on our blog post and there will be all the links to apply. You've been already saying, uh, that you, uh, l that you have patient capital, 10 to 20 years. Um, my first question would be, is this like the time span you're looking to spend the money or would you expect to spend the money like in the next, during the next leg legislature, meaning the next four years, uh, Bundestag is in session and then keep growing the program? Now, our perspective is a 10 year perspective. Um, uh, for all these programs with the Deep Tech Future Fund, we can extend it to 20 years because of its specific elements. But in general, we are planning for 10 years. That's um, always, I believe, a period you need for a reliable business. And uh, in a single year, I believe you cannot uh, find enough attractive targets uh, for this huge amount of money. And we want to foster over all these years. So um, it's a 10 year perspective and it's independent from this legislation and and good thing is we also have additional money from the past uh because also of good earnings and good exits that we have seen over the last time uh mirror was one of these uh successful exits from the high tech wonder for And so therefore, um, additional to these uh, 10, 10 uh, billion of government money or public money, uh, we have also um, uh, additionally around uh, five or six billion from the old programs. So there is much more firepower that we have. So in total, you're going to spend somewhere 15, 16 billion on the German startup scene, including the European, which is also eligible. Um, just totally unrelated to my podcast and what I'm doing here are also media startups eligible for this? Because if you want to go big and global, you have to go to the big, uh, blocks in the US or in the UK. Did you also consider that? 
Yeah, absolutely. We are totally agnostic on technologies. Yeah. And where we make these direct investments like the um, uh, Deep Tech Fund or the High Tech Kunda Fund. So uh, we have investment managers there and you have to convince them. And as you know, in this, in this field, so people believe in teams and ideas and however. And if you, if you uh, can convince them, you're in. Yeah. And uh, on all the other parts, uh, for us, it's important to have these private partners and to be mostly uh, in a minority and the majority is private risk and also private decisions. And I believe this is the smartest way to spend public money, because if we would have made some programs where you uh, have uh, uh, to write down sites and sites and pages and pages of, of, of bureaucracy, this would not lead uh, to good market solutions. So our aim is that if, if you find private people taking the majority of the risks, so they will make wise decisions because they have to lose a lot of that. And it's technic uh, technically uh, uh, agnostic and for media startups, why not? Uh, bottom line is there are some seasoned investment managers. If you can get by them, if you convince them, you can get the money. <laughs> that, that's the message I'm taking from you. Yeah, in some way, yes. Yeah, because I believe it wouldn't be the right way if there would sit some politicians and they say, so this is a good startup and this is a bad startup. Uh, this would be, that, that would come out horrible decisions. And you need, you need people uh, with market experience and with a track record in the end. Mm -hmm. Just, uh, we are running approximately a 25 minutes recording right now. That was actually a very good overview. Um, Unfortunately, not everything is hammered out, but since there is a new government coming in, that may be a wise decision. I found one final article when I was preparing for this interview, and it said that the U.S. want to boost uh, their research, their tech research, with 250 billion U.S. dollars, just roughly 200, 220 billion euros. Do you think 10 billion is enough, or would you like to add on to this? Yeah, this is only amount of money we are spending in startups and not in R and D. And um, so I, I cannot tell you how much we invest in R and D, but it's a huge amount. We have our own ministry for that, and they have really deep pockets. We have the whole Fraunhofer Institutes and Max Planck's and DLR, DLR and whatever, and and all these universities. And so I believe we are spending a lot. Uh, uh, when it comes to R&D, our uh, goal is to invest 3.5% uh, 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 of the whole uh, money uh, uh, of Germany into the uh, um, R&D sector. And so it looks pretty good uh, on that side. But um, what what we are aiming is uh, to, to get more open with all these projects. I think this is something where we can get better and where we are also looking for private partners yeah? uh, to get all these technologies out of these institutes to the market. We need private partners and we don't need them after seven or eight years. Uh, we need them early, very early in the beginning, so that there is a market focus and there is an uh, investor focus. And I think this is where we can get better. And with the DLR, we are starting with this. We have uh, a new structure there. And uh, there is one guy, Professor Lemmer, Uh, he is not a tech transfer guy, so he's, he's exclusively the one on the board for, for tech transfer and he's looking, I uh, spend a lot of, of, of research on how MIT and Stanford and others are doing and now we're going to implement uh, this as a kind of best practice here in Germany and I believe this can be a role model also for the other uh, huge R&D institutions that we have. Good closing words. Thank you very much. It was a pleasure having you as a guest here. Uh, best of luck, as we do in Germany, thumbs press for your re-election. And hopefully we can have you back and we can talk a little bit more about the specifics of the program. I'm looking forward to this. Thanks for your time. Thank you. Bye-bye. If you are a professional looking at the European startup scene, Germany is a place you cannot miss. Fortunately for you, there is startuprad.io the authority on German startups. This English-only podcast brings you fresh interviews each week. Most likely, you have never heard or read anything on these startups before in English, but you will in the future. Be ahead of the curve and subscribe to startuprad.eo podcast. 
or check for the StartupRad.io internet radio station. Check your Alexa for the StartupRad.io skill as well.